Welcome back climate changers to day three, the plastic planet. At this point, we've covered climate change, mass extinction, fossil fuels, and some pretty awesome conservation stories. And today we're talking about plastic pollution, a conservation topic that we hope you've at least heard about. As a refresher, on day one, we talked about three types of fossil fuels, natural gas, petroleum, and coal. Petroleum is the liquid form of fossil fuel that drilling projects are looking for, and is refined to make diesel, gasoline, and plastic, which is what we're going to talk about today. If you take a few minutes to look around you, try to count everything that's plastic. It's everywhere, and it's used to make nearly everything. It has completely changed our way of living, and it's affecting the rest of the planet too. Don't get us wrong, plastic has helped in so many ways helping with sanitation in hospitals, and helping create useful products for renewable energy. But our usage of plastic has gone unchecked for decades. I mean, most of our clothing is made from plastic. Not mine. Okay, well, fast fashion's a whole other story. Anyway, the impacts of our enormous dependency on plastic are astonishing and hard problem to solve, but we'll get into that. On this planet, we consume 320 billion tons of plastic per year, and more plastic was created in just the last decade than ever before. A lot of this plastic is used one single time before being thrown away and can persist for hundreds if not thousands of years. Single-use plastic or plastic that's only used once makes up about half of the plastic that we use, and it's what we should all strive to reduce. The average lifespan of a plastic bag is nearly 12 seconds, but we aren't even sure how long it takes to break down. Plastic's long-lasting durability is part of the reason why it's so widely used, but also one of the reasons why it's hurting our planet so severely. Plastic is also linked to climate change because it's made from fossil fuels, but it also causes an entire other slew of problems in our environment. The plastic pollution problem is one of the most urgent problems of our lifetime. According to the IUCN, 8 million tons of plastic ends up in the ocean each year. This is called marine debris. But how does plastic get into the ocean? Well, it's thought that 80% of marine pollution comes from land sources, and the other 20%, well, it comes from the sea. The main sources from land are storm runoff, sewer overflow, irresponsible beachgoers, lack of waste management, construction, and illegal dumping. Remember, all drains lead to the ocean. Ocean-based plastic comes mainly from, well, you guessed it, the fishing industry. Is plastic pollution really that bad? For this lesson, we're going to focus on the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean in the world, and surrounds us right here in Hawaii. You've probably heard of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and some of you may have heard that it's the size of Texas, but actually now, it's twice the size of Texas, and still growing. Part of understanding plastic pollution in the Great Pacific Arbage Patch is understanding ocean currents. Because of the way that our Earth spins, the tilt that it spins at, and wind systems, we have circular current systems in every single ocean basin called gyres. These gyres are what causes trash to gather in the middle, meaning that we have a garbage patch in the middle of all five gyres on our planet. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous, and most of it's made of plastic. Instead of explaining how all this works, let us just show you. Say a plastic water bottle is discarded off the coast of California and takes the California current south toward Mexico. There, it may catch the North Equatorial Current, which crosses the vast Pacific. Then, near the coast of Japan, the water bottle may travel north along the powerful Kuroshio Current. Finally, the bottle travels eastward on the North Pacific Current and the gentle rolling vortexes of the eastern and western garbage patches slowly draw the plastic bottle to the middle of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So now we understand how plastic gets to the ocean and stays there. But what happens once it's there? Well, plastic doesn't really break down, it just breaks up. Plastic is super durable and hard to break with our own hands. But with constant exposure to sunlight, wind, and currents, plastic ultimately fragments into smaller pieces. Depending on the size of these smaller pieces, they can be termed microplastics or nanoplastics. What kind of impact does plastic have on marine life? Yesterday, we talked a lot about species that are impacted by human activities. Now, we're going to go through a few ways that plastic can affect living things in the ocean and the ecosystem as a whole. The first one is entanglement and plastic pollution. Marine animals, especially the ones that breathe air just like us, can easily become entangled in marine debris like netting, fishing line, or other gear. 
This happens a lot with seabirds, dolphins, sea turtles, whales, and other marine life. When they become entangled, they may not be able to swim, move, breathe, and they can injure themselves when they're interacting with the gear. The best way that we can address this is by reducing the amount of fishing gear that's being left behind in our oceans. And we can do this with policy, research, education, and enforcement. The second way that plastic pollution can impact marine life is through ingestion. Marine animals can sometimes mistake plastic pollution as prey. The most well-known example of this is sea turtles mistaking a floating plastic bag as a jellyfish floating in the water. Another one is seabirds mistaking nurdles, or the raw material that all other plastic is made from, as fish eggs and bringing it back to their chicks for food. Ingestion of plastic can hurt marine animals in a few different ways. It can make them feel full even when they're not, causing starvation. Or it could cause internal injuries that they may not be able to recover from. The best way to solve the problem of ingestion of plastic is to stop using plastic products as much as we have been. Luckily, sustainable and low waste alternatives have become so much more mainstream in recent years. The third way that plastic can hurt marine life is because of the pollutants. We know plastic is made from petroleum, but it also contains a lot of harsh chemicals that are introduced as petroleum is refined into plastic. These pollutants can affect animals, the ecosystem, and even us. And as plastics fragment from sunlight and weather, these pollutants are released into the marine environment and contaminate it. Once they're released, we can't remove them. And lastly, plastic pollution disrupts the marine food chain. As small plastics fragment and the pollutants that they release move up the food chain, they can become biomagnified in top predator species like dolphins and tuna. We are already seeing some scary effects of this. A study through the University of Newcastle in Australia and the World Wildlife Fund in 2019 found that humans could be ingesting nearly a credit card of plastic per week. Even if you don't eat seafood, microplastic fragments have already entered our food chain. If that doesn't scream urgent, I don't know what does. Well, let's clean it up, right? If you look at plastic pollution, you can see that a large scale cleanup process would be difficult. How can you make sure that you're only grabbing plastic and not something that's supposed to be there, like a fish? Scientists estimate it would take 67 ships a full year to clean up less than 1% of the plastic in the North Pacific alone. And while good humans around the world are committed to cleaning up our oceans, first, we just gotta stop using so much plastic. Well, recycling exists. Isn't that just our solution? Mm, not exactly. Although recycling is a great start, it's not the entire solution. In the United States, a whopping 91% of plastic isn't even recycled. When it comes to recycling, we are 30% behind Europe and 25% behind China in our recycling efforts. The majority of plastic produced, about 80%, is either accumulating in landfills or ending up in the natural environment, like our oceans, and not being recycled. Also, the actual process of recycling is quite intensive and uses a lot of resources and energy along the way. If we want to be better about our individual plastic waste, first, we have to understand what's even recyclable. It completely depends on your local recycling centers. So we encourage you to check it out with your family or friends to know that you're recycling the right things. Most people would just wish cycle or throw things like oily pizza boxes or dirty peanut butter jars in the bin and hope they'll get recycled. And I'll tell you right now, they won't be because they're contaminated with things that can't be recycled. There are seven different types of plastics, and they vary based on how they were created. Number one plastic is PET, which can be used for plastic bottles, clothing, carpet fibers, and more. In general, PET is pretty easy to recycle and is widely accepted at most recycling centers. Number two is called HDPE, which is used for things like detergent bottles, snack boxes, milk jugs, toys, furniture, trash bins, and more. It's denser, which means it sinks in our oceans and therefore is a bit harder to recycle. Number three is called PVC, which is used for things like door frames, credit cards, gutters, and synthetic leather. All of these are super difficult to recycle. So no, when you have a number three plastic, it probably won't be recycled. Number four is LDPE, which can be used for food packaging film, shopping bags, bubble wrap, and more. While these are manageable to recycle, they aren't in our area, so they may or may not be in yours. 
Plastic number five is called PP, which is used to make things like plastic bottle caps, straws, lunch boxes, diapers, and other of those thicker kinds of plastics. Once again, these are all pretty hard to recycle, but check with your local facility, who knows? Number six is called PS, or polystyrene. This is Chris's least favorite type of plastic because it's rarely recycled, if ever. And it's so lightweight that it easily ends up in our oceans. Polystyrene is like styrofoam and can be used in lunch trays, packing peanuts, styrofoam lunch containers, styrofoam cups, insulation, coat hangers, and even toys. And the last type of plastic, number seven, is just considered other. Other is nearly impossible to recycle and are things like CDs. They don't remember CDs. Oh, right, right, right. Well, it's also things like car parts, nylon, baby bottles, and even storage containers. My goodness, there are so many different types of plastic and there's so much to know about them. But honestly, you don't need to remember all of those details. You just need to check with your local recycling facility to see what number of plastic they recycle. Why can't we just stop using plastic altogether? Well, many people have drastically reduced their plastic consumption, and you can too. The sustainable living movement has actually gained a lot of momentum in the last couple years, and there's actually people out there who don't use any single-use plastic. Instead, they bring their reusable bags to the grocery store, always have a reusable water bottle on them, don't get styrofoam takeout containers, and choose bar soaps over bottles. Companies have felt this shift, and they've started to change too. Many businesses realize that consumers care about the planet, and we're willing to go buy from somewhere else that does too. I've sent my fair share of emails to companies encouraging them to reduce their own plastic usage. In fact, you'll get a chance to do that later this week. One huge problem is that the plastics industry is subsidized by the federal government using taxpayer dollars. That means that the extraction of fossil fuels and the production of plastics and the pollution that comes along with both of those is all being paid for by our government. Removing or greatly reducing these subsidies can dramatically solve this problem. So how do we do that? Well, policy needs to be introduced. So representatives in Congress and the White House have to hear that this is what we want. By letting them know how important this issue is, they know that they must do better. Now that you better understand plastic pollution, hopefully things are coming together for you. All of these environmental challenges are related to one another. Climate change, plastic, increases in extinction, human behavior, and the solutions. Your activity for this lesson will help you better understand your own plastic usage and get you thinking on ways that we can all make simple changes for our oceans, health, and the animals that we share this planet with. Get psyched, we're covering solutions tomorrow. See you later, climate changers.